Welcome to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him at God's Five Minutes at gmail.com. Now, here's Ed Wilson with God's Five Minutes. Hello, friends. Matthew, that magnificent proponent of Christ as Messiah, recorded in the fourth chapter of his gospel, Jesus taking up residence at Capernaum. When Jesus heard John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee and dwelt in Capernaum, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, saying, The land of Zabulon and the land of Nephthalim, by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region in shadow of death, light is sprung up. John was silenced. The voice that had cried after me, Cometh a greater than I, was stifled in a dungeon. And that moved Jesus to go back to Galilee, near where John had been, and take up his ministry there. It was fitting that he of whom John had spoken should at once stand forth. There must be no interval between the ringing proclamation by the herald and the appearance of the king, lest people should say that one more hope had been dashed and one more prophet proven only a dreamer. In Jesus' action we find the mystery and power of all the later Christian martyrs, for in just this manner, the quenching of a light kindled to bear witness to the true light must always be the occasion for that un- unkindled and unquenchable light to burn the more brightly. The choice of Capernaum as a residence answered Isaiah's prophecy. Zabulon lay in what is now called Lower Galilee, stretching from the northern end of the Sea of Gennesaret to the coast of the Mediterranean, where Naphtali lay farther north. The way of the sea is a further description of the same area and could be translated towards the sea, while beyond Jordan is the almost heathen territory on the east bank of the river, and Galilee of the Gentiles is the general name for all three, the two tribal territories and the Transjordanic district. These are all termed the people who sat in darkness. The intense pathos of that description and its sad truth are compelling. They sit in the dark, the attitude of listlessness and constrained inaction, which are all too true an emblem of the paralysis which falls on all the highest activities of the spirit if the light of God has been quenched. It is only wild beasts that are active in the night. The lower parts of man's nature may work energetically in darkness, but the nobility that makes his glory is somnolent without light. Christ's light has been the great impulse to progress, races without it sit and do not march. But that's not all, for the sad picture is sketched again with blacker shadows in the next clause, which substitutes for darkness the still more tragic words, the region and shadow of death. The realm of darkness is the region of death. That dread figure is a lord of it, and grimly enough its very intensity of blackness has power to throw a shadow even there where there is no light and to deepen the gloom. In one sense, we have all shared the darkness with those long-ago souls. Within ourselves, we have only the longing for light. There can be no greater mercy than to have the pure light of hope for the development of the better angels of our nature shine into the darkness of our undeveloped hearts. The second part of Isaiah's promise, as quoted by Matthew, enhances the hope and beauty of the first, for it speaks not only of the light appearing, but of its springing up, which means it appears with force and majesty. Not only does Jesus Christ intend to appear to every heart, but he comes with power to deliver from the sin that causes the shadow of death, the channel of this miraculous enlightening to those who had no means to bring it to themselves is the ministry of our Lord. That is exactly the manner in which he will shine on those in darkness today. His mortal lips have ascended into glory, but only to be replaced by a great multitude of his followers, inspired with the same spirit of love and mercy, shining the gospel light to the world. The Lord wants us to light our candles, to shine them into every darkened corner, to consider that aside from those who are mentioned in Isaiah's prophecy, there are many in our world today who lack the light that alone guides a soul to beauty and truth and purity. Have you talked to God today? You have been listening to God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson. Reach him by email at g-o-d-s-f-i-v-e minutes at gmail.com. Tune in next time to hear more encouraging thoughts from God's Word on God's Five Minutes with Pastor Ed Wilson.
Are you a Christian who likes to read? If not, there's a whole world of Christian publishing out there that you're missing out on. I invite you to check out the Author's Corner podcast, where I talk to the latest Christian authors each week about their new book releases and what's coming next. So if you're ready to jumpstart your spiritual growth with the newest books and the authors who write them, check out the Author's Corner podcast with me, Roberta Foster.